We're on with Russell Karp, uh, Vice President with Data Arts Media and Entertainment Practice, who is focused on the betting and entertainment sector and sports in particular. And I know, Russell, in the last few years, that sector has gone through tremendous change and our work at Data Art uh, with, with clients from that sector has gotten a lot bigger. But now the virus, the pandemic changed everything. So first of all, thank you for sharing um, your insights with us. But the first question is obvious. There's no sports. What are sports betting people betting on when there's no sports? Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent point. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty slim pickings uh, these days. <clears throat> uh, we have seen an uptick in some you know, secondary and tertiary betting markets, such as esports, horse and greyhound racing, uh, even some soccer matches in remote parts of uh, Europe and Asia. Uh, one that's been pretty interesting is uh, Ukrainian table tennis. So when things were um, initially shut down, uh, bettors found one very active league, which was Ukra Ukrainian table tennis. And uh, to this day, there are multiple daily matches, and it's it's uh, uh, a, a, there's pretty high demand from the better side uh, for Ukrainian table tennis. So was Besides, someone betting on it before the crisis, or they all discovered that this is something you could bet on now? Uh, the bets were available. Uh, they weren't the most desirable because uh, I'm sure 99.9% .9 of the public do not know any of the players or anything about them. Uh, but again, as soon as kind of uh, betting options dwindled down, uh, they started looking at, uh, you know, this area and, and doing research on who these players are, their, their records, and um, it kind of evolved into a, a pretty uh, uh, active area. Yeah. Virtual sports or esports, e which is very hard for me to fathom, what's that all about? So those, that's an excellent question and it comes up often. So those are two completely different things. Uh, so esports is specifically um, video games, that are played between teams and uh, they have tournaments, uh, individual competitions, uh, and you can, you can bet on that. So these are actually people playing games like Fortnite. Um, and uh, it's been semi-popular, uh, but it has gained popularity um, in the sports betting market recently. Virtual sports is a very interesting area. Uh, it's only legal in New Jersey, in the United States, but it's very popular uh, in other parts of the world, specifically Asia. Um, so what virtual sports is, is a, a collection of historical data that, we, that, uh, that an algorithm is applied to, which produces game results. So, for example, you can take the last 25 years in basketball in the NBA, uh, put it through... Uh, kind of an AI ML application, um, and that will spit out results uh, based on uh, how the how the league is is formed today. Because uh, the the style of play has changed in the last twenty five years, so all of that is taken into account when when the results are produced. So it's it's basically a simulation of what could be happening today with historical participants and the modern rules of the game, and you can bet on the output outcome of that simulation? Exactly, right. So there, ah. there's nobody, yeah. And you can actually watch it too. So there are a couple of different variations of virtual sports where you can just bet on something and then the result is displayed immediately, or you can actually sit through and watch uh, the results as, as they occur, which allows for even more betting because you can then introduce live, live betting or in-play betting uh, dur during uh, the vir virtual sports events. I am a big fan of one particular sport, which is tennis, in real life at least. And tennis has been hit hard uh, like every other sport. There's no live events, no, no physical uh, events of any kind. Uh, however, you know, tennis, I think, has tried to move into the virtual space. And right now, as we speak, um, a, a pretty big virtual tournament, you, you can watch it you can comment on it and you can bet on it. I find it fascinating. And, and so because we're, we're a technology services company and our role in all of this is helping these companies uh, to develop these, these tools and these technologies, 
I guess it's a safe bet that the life hasn't stopped. So people are still developing stuff, still doing stuff there. Yeah, yeah. They're looking for creative ways to um, engage fans and to continue to engage fans. Um, I'm a very big tennis fan myself. And when Wimbledon was canceled a few weeks ago, it, I think that's when this whole epi- pandemic really, really hit me. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, similar to what you described, you know, with, with tennis players playing these virtual matches using their avatars and and their computer simulated, you know, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the, the same thing is is happening for Formula One and NASCAR racing as well. Um, and it, it's actually gathering a fair amount of fan engagement on social media uh, platforms like Twitch. Um, you know, they're they're seeing uh, big gains. You know, during this time, uh, for folks who you know want to stay um, engaged with uh, you know the, the sports that they follow. So you're, you're, I'm sure you're in touch with many of the contacts in the sports tech and betting uh, betting sectors, speculating on recovery, the timeline and what shape it will take is just that speculation. But if you would indulge us, what are people saying specifically in this sector? What does recovery look like and when is it likely to happen? Yeah, I mean, as you said, like things are you know pretty, pretty bleak um, currently. Um, there are some companies that are almost 90, 95% down on their revenue. Um, and uh, the good news is, is when things start picking back up, which um, hopefully will be within the next several months, you know, around the you know, late June, July timeframe, uh, there will be a lot of pent up demand and there will be a lot of active sports at that time. So if you take the sports in the, in the States, for example, um, we have three major sports that are uh, sidelined, uh, baseball, basketball, and hockey. Um, they're all going to start playing pretty much at the same time. And especially in basketball and hockey, um, the games will be extremely meaningful. Um, and baseball, they're rumored to redesign how um, – Teams are aligned by divisions, which will kind of bring uh, a kind of a fresh aspect to the sport, which will draw even more interest. So when things start moving along, uh, you know, a lot of the lost revenue uh, will be recouped. Um, not all of it, of course, because uh, we spent mm-hmm. a few months here uh, with pretty much nothing. But um, some, some of these companies that I have spoken to, um, who just focused on sports betting, uh, they're, they're starting to look into uh, overall eye gaming. So they're, they're thinking about how do we get into uh, casino, online casino games such as uh, you know, roulette or blackjack, um, uh, slots, because uh, that can be an additional uh, source of revenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they don't want to pigeonhole themselves into just sports betting in case you know something like this might happen again um it's again uh, other eye gaming options like um your typical uh, floor games you know can be uh played online and that will not stop during a, a pandemic yeah. it might even increase well thanks very much for sharing your insights i really appreciate it russell carr vice president with data arts media sports and entertainment practice thanks again pleasure thank you